How's it going, everybody? This is the Nitty Gritty. My name is Chad. With me, as always, is Leonard. This is a show about wrestling. And this week, we are bringing you another one of our super reviews, where we take a episode of a random promotion or company, and we review it from top to bottom and uh, explain what we think of said episode. And this week, we are going to be tackling the first episode of Wrestling Society X, which was filmed in late 2006, aired in 2007. And before I throw it to Leonard to kind of give you some more background <laughs> on Wrestling Society X, I will just say that so 2006 into 2007, I was about a year out of college at this point. And, you know, I had work going on. I, so I was very much invested in whatever job I had and moving from PA to New Jersey to be with the person who is now my wife. So wrestling was really not something that I was paying attention to in any way. Um, not only was this an era of WWE that I didn't care for, um, but certainly something like this would have Pat would have flown right under my radar. So I had zero idea what this was until Leonard and I talked about it um, before on a previous show, I believe. And uh, yeah, it was the last time we did uh, watch that card with me giving to you. I right. gave you this episode saying either you would know what it was cold or you would have no idea what I was talking about. Right. You had no idea what I was talking about. I remember watching it at the time. I know I watched the first two episodes, maybe the first three or four. And um, it was, as you said, you weren't really watching, but there wasn't a lot going on outside of WWE and TNA Impact. There wasn't anything else really in mainstream wrestling, uh, especially on television in the U.S. at the time. Right. So this was at least trying to kind of fill uh, a void. Right. Well, um, at this point, I will throw it to you, Leonard. Let's talk about sure. Wrestling Society X. Yeah, so a, a little more background here. Uh, there were uh, nine episodes with one unaired on MTV, which ran from January to March of 2007. The show's taped in November of 06 in Los Angeles, California. Uh, the final 10th episode uh, was part of, the, of a DVD of the first and only season. Uh, episodes one to four aired at 1030 Tuesdays against uh, WWE's version of ECW. And episodes five to nine were burned off over a weekend marathon uh, on MTV. And all the episodes, including the online exclusive, the WS Extra, which we'll talk about too, be, uh, is all on YouTube. So you can find everything on YouTube. Uh, the, a little more on the company before we get to this episode. The bookers were Vampiro, who was their top star, indie wrestler Chris Michaels, and Kevin Kleinrock, who was the founder of XPW with Rob Black and worked for video distribution company Big Vision Entertainment, who produced the series. So from things I was reading, some other videos I was watching, uh, Big Vision had connections with MTV. That led to Climb Rock pitching his original idea, which was the Rancid Wrestling Federation, because the band Rancid were big fans, supposedly, of XPW. But they apparently didn't want to be part of it, so it led to a more general mix of hardcore wrestling and heavy metal slash alternative rock uh, of, of the period. Uh, so this, on one hand, you can see the ECW and XPW influence. On the other hand, too, you can see, you know, rewatching it, uh, the, it was in kind of in some ways a forerunner to Lucha Underground. You know, storylines, weren't as involved as they did, but they did a lot of stuff with visual and sound effects and the idea that this was some sort of underground rebel wrestling league. And um, it, it shot from the uh, WSX bunker, which was a location that was almost a character in and of itself, like the temple. Uh, so you do have some some elements of Lucha Underground there. And before we go to this episode, Chad, I'll ask, I'll ask you, do you kind of see that? Like it's like a bridge between, say, ECW and Lucha Underground? Did you get that? So I, I did when I watched this. I thought about Lucha Underground once or twice. Mm -hmm. I did. But I wouldn't compare it to that in a positive way. <laughs> like, okay. Uh, uh, so I, I'll tell you what I, one of the notes I made was that 
somebody when they pitched this was like, okay, let's take ECW and late era WCW and just mash them together. And that'll be golden. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> right. Like that's kind of what I had. And then I was like, maybe Vince and Triple H saw this and was like, one day we're going to start our thing called Raw Underground. <laughs> and that, <laughs> like, because I thought about that a lot when I watched mm-hmm. it. I got like the bunker looks like something straight out of Raw Underground that like Shane was hosting. Um, so yeah, uh, like this was, I, I did think about Lucha Underground though. I was like, this reminds me a little bit of, of that. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll get uh, to more. Yeah. So, yeah, so this first episode, uh, to, to tell you off the bat, the commentators are Chris Kloss, who worked for XPW and comedian Brett Ernst. And Zach Wilde of the band uh, Black Label Society sits in with them. And this isn't on the video. And I don't know if this is something maybe that got cut on YouTube for copyright purposes. Uh, but there were bands that would be that would perform and be part of every episode. And a right. member of the group would sit in on commentary. Probably the most notable was Pitbull before he was anybody. Uh, but Zach Wilde is on here, and the ring announcer is a guy named Fabian Kalen, who has a Mr. Kennedy microphone, and he just runs around in a circle like a, like a dog when you get home from work, and he's so excited to see you, and just screams at if the audience. If your dog sniffed a pile of cocaine. Yes, like yes. I, that was my first, one of my first notes was ring announcer on coke. Like, <laughs> like because he is jacked up, like, what was that? trainer's name tony little the guy that was yes always, you, know, totally like, cool. you know you have to get jacked up on like as much drugs as you can before you go out there um yeah and then, like so like he's that animated in the ring and then later in the ws uh, extra like he said his name and i was like is that the same guy i was like it looks like the same guy but he is toned way down for this than he was for the in-ring stuff i yeah Yes. <laughs> so, and then another thing to mention before we get going too is I noticed this right off the bat, right at the start, is the crowd noise is definitely piped in during post. <laughs> yeah. Because it's this constant like white noise, and you can tell nobody's doing anything. And I had this guess, and I found this out from the stuff I was watching and reading, was that um, most of the crowd were paid extras. Aside from a few people that were drug off the streets and given free tickets. Plans so, so that they could have like really crazy facial expressions and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So you do see some acting going on when they shoot to the crowd. Um, but uh, the first match is Matt Seidel, who would become Evan Bourne in WWE, uh, with Lizzie Valentine, who's presented as his girlfriend. And they're like these squeaky clean baby faces. So therefore, they're the heels. And then Jack Evans is dressed like Eminem doing a skate punk thing, and he's the good guy. Right. <laughs> so it's Matt Seidel versus Jack Evans. Um, this is what Chad knows I love when call flippy dudes. Um, right. It's very it's very spot heavy. They go outside the ring a couple times. Uh, there are some really cool looking moves here. Seidel uses a submission finisher called the Siamese Twin. Uh, which is kind of neat looking. He gets a pump handle into a power bomb that I thought looked really good, uh, followed by a standing moonsault. The finish comes when Valentine grabs his Evans' leg from the outside, and she gets drug into the ring. So he uses her as a springboard to get a tornado DDT and then finishes with a 630 splash. After that, Evans and Valentine kind of exchange eyes at each other, so it seems like they're going to do a thing where she's got the hots for Jack Evans. So this is a complete and total spot fest, uh, which Chad knows I'm not a huge fan of. And that way, it, it's kind of way ahead of its time as a, something you might even see on TV today. But your thoughts on the first match? Yeah. So first of all, Lizzie Valentine, could they have not found an outfit for her to wear? She looks like a middle school teacher. Uh, it's like a pink sweater and it was like khaki shorts right like capri, capris maybe capris okay um i yeah i don't know like her outfit was just in the hair i was like 
I was like, what exactly is she supposed to be? I think the idea was they wanted her to look like a sorority chick, maybe? Oh, okay. Well, in any event, Matt Seidel, I like mm -hmm. a lot. Um, I liked him as Evan Bourne as well. He shows up from time to time in AEW now. Uh, you know, I almost feel bad for Evan Bourne in a, in a way, because, like, you know, he was one of these really high flyers at a time when WWE wasn't really high on them. Like they used him obviously, but like, you know, and then when he go now that he's in AEW, he's a little bit older. So he's not of the younger generation anymore. So he's kind of, you know, avoided the spotlight where I feel like, you know, he, he could have gotten there at, at one point, but um, you know, in any event, uh, this played like this, is he a heavily edited show. Um, yes. What, what I wrote was that this was plays like the highlights of an actual match. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not, it, it's not really a, a match. Like if you had asked me to rate this, I wouldn't know what to say because I feel like we're not getting the actual match. I feel like we're getting as much action as possible packed into one little short segment and mm -hmm. you know, hey, look at this flip! Look at that! Now, what was he doing here? Like, so yeah. So part of again what I uncovered, and I watched, uh, which was surprisingly a pretty good video from Called a Holic about the company, and even Kevin Kleinrock himself commented saying it was very accurate, uh, aside from like one thing. Uh, but apparently, MTV didn't want any sort of violence that children could do themselves at home. So punches, kicks, headlocks, didn't want any of that. So all that stuff got edited out. And it's oh. just the super crazy flippy stuff that you can't, that they would have a hard time doing. Oh, no. Oh, so like anybody, anybody, uh, you know, um, <laughs> any family out there watching this has to chuckle a little bit because like one thing I know for having grown up in the 80s before they did a lot of this flippy stuff, mm -hmm. um, if kids see it they will try it no matter yeah. if it's feasible for them to do or not like i busted my lip open many a times coming off the corner of the couch you know jumping you know trying to give like a double axe handle to my father so you know like it's it's funny to me like no headlocks no wrist locks but you know do this 630 you know kids will never try that <laughs> yeah, it's too hard. They can't do that. And and the other thing, too, is on the video, oddly enough, no chairs because a kid can have a chair. But he can't have an exploding ring. He can't have a tank full of piranha, Yeah. Uh, which isn't on this episode. But the, but the final episode of the series, which they did there, had uh, chaos being thrown into a tank supposedly full of piranha and a cage match uh, where the cage exploded. I saw that in the description on Wikipedia, and yeah. I was like, this is one of the episodes I actually am curious to see. <laughs> it is on YouTube. It's 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 the 10th episode that they did there on TV. I was going to try to watch maybe a few others. I did. I did watch some clips and some highlights. So this show is only two matches. Now, we do get a hype video for some incoming tag teams. We'll talk about those when we get to the um, – extra portion and then we get promos for the main event from just incredible new jack pushing chris hamrick teddy hart and chaos with aguilera so the main event is a rumble match and here's the rules you get 10 guys they're going to enter one at a time at 40 second intervals once all 10 men are in the ring then two contracts above the ring come into play and whoever uses the ladders to retrieve the contracts will face each other on the next show for the WXX championship. At any time, a man can be eliminated if he's thrown out of the ring, over the top rope, lands on the floor. And around the ring, there are tables. There are live electrical cables, supposedly, in a box. And a cage, what I would call like a cage box, rigged to explode. <laughs> all around the room. So I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you the entrances and the eliminations here as we go. Uh, so the first two that come in are just incredible and Teddy Hart chaos who worked a lot for XPW uh, comes in at three. Vampiro is four. Uh, we go to commercial. We come back to find that Puma 
uh, who is actually TJ Perkins in a mask. And I got to think he's pretty young here. Um, he entered the ring during the commercial, was immediately eliminated by Vampiro going out through a table. Uh, Alcatraz came out next uh, during the commercial. Back live, Six Pack, who is Sean Waltman, comes out. Uh, Chris Hamrick is eight, but New Jack, who I'm guessing was supposed to be nine, jumps him, jumps the gun and comes out, fights with Hamrick, um, winds up knocking him off the apron through a table to eliminate him. And then New Jack goes through the ropes to go chase. Well, first he beats up a referee. <laughs> Throws the referee in the ring and smashes him with a guitar from out of nowhere. That they act like was the first time that ever happened in wrestling. Yes, no one has ever hit someone with a guitar before. Yes, that, that's very much what it was. So New Jack's eliminated, even though technically I think they said you had to go over the top rope and he went through the ropes. Yeah, I know. I wrote that down in my notes. <laughs> yeah. So then I'll get this. So New Jack puts Hamrick on a table by the entrance, and he jumps off of some storage containers on top of him. While that is going on, Luke Hawks comes out of nowhere, and he puts Chaos through the live wires box on the outside, and we get this super fake-looking electrical explosion. <laughs> and Alcatraz is thrown out through a table. All three of these things happen at the exact same time. Right. The way they have it cut, it's boom, boom, boom. Right. So then the final man, you suicide comes out. He has a metal bucket filled with tacks. Uh, Teddy Hart gets eliminated going through a table. Uh, Vampiro takes you suicide off a ladder, gives him a power bomb on the tacks. This allows six pack to grab the first contract. You suicide climbs again, and he is pushed off the ladder and goes through the exploding cage box, which they sell like he's dead. <laughs> yeah. uh, the commentators do. Then Credible and Vampiro race up. Vampiro gets the contract as Waltman is pushing the ladder over. And as soon as he comes off with it, they're like, Vampiro's got the contract. We cut the black. End of show. <laughs> no aftermath. End of show. His feet touch the mat and we're gone. <laughs> it's like it's like this ridiculous high of an episode. And then it's like, okay, we're done. It's only a half hour. And, you know... I think it needed an hour. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, so, yeah, like um, the the death, the like the props around the ring are like straight out of like a Hollywood movie set. <laughs> like, yeah, like what happens there? Um, and it just like it, to me, like the com. Oh man, the commentators like are like overhyped to the to the max. And, like, they have this relationship going on, like, the heel and face commentator. And I guess you're supposed to care, but you really don't, you know, unless... No, because you... you know who they are. Right. And it goes back and forth. It's like they're calling the match and they're talking about other stuff. And all of a sudden, it's like one of them went, oh, hey, we're supposed to not like each other. Or... And then they, like, throw a random barb at each other, you know? Yeah. Like, they forgot. Um, and yeah, like you said, same thing with the guitar. Like every time someone went through a table or when, when you suicide brought the tax, they were like, Oh my God, tax. I've never seen tax before. And this was way after, you know, funk and Foley and all that stuff. So Chris Kloss reminded me a little bit like of Joey styles. Um, I, he was definitely trying to ape styles. I thought that too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll save my thoughts overall. Um, you know, at the end. Um, but I did think it was interesting yeah. that they made a point to note that there were no mats around the ring. Yeah. Uh, concrete. Because that's like a subtle difference from the other companies. And obviously they have mats for a reason, but, uh, but mm -hmm. I thought, I thought that was interesting. So uh, I assume you're going to go towards the extra part, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's the show that aired on MTV, but they have what was called WS extra every week which aired on mtv.com hosted by fabian kalen and some lady named lacy it's not lacy evans and it's not lacy von eric um and for the time that's kind of innovative to have online exclusive material um i don't know if anyone else had, had really done it up up to that point so they show highlights of the first episode the rumble match the sidell evans match just highlights of that 
Basically, uh, what we have is highlights of, of highlights. highlights. Highlights of highlights. It's something I've never seen anybody do before. Yeah. I, I When I watched it, I was like, you know, if, if what you saw on TV, the half hour, like, nonstop car crash was not quick enough for you. Well, here are these highlights of highlights. And hopefully it's like they're trying to appeal to people with severe ADD. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and then he, here's the interesting thing. We get a hype video for a lot of, of the talent and these are very quick, you know, splashes to get things over. But it's interesting. A lot of the names that we have here, we have that 70s team, which is Joey Ryan and Disco Machine. We have the Filth and the Fury, which is Matt Cross and Teddy Hart. We have the Human Tornado, uh, who's working a pimp gimmick. We have Train. Hold on, hold on. I gotta stop. I gotta stop you. I yeah. wrote it down in my notes. One of the greatest things I've ever seen in my life: the Human Tornado calls his fans tornadoes. <laughs> yes. They Which mentioned that. Is and I tell you what, at, anywhere he goes. At the time I was watching this, Human Tornado was my favorite. <laughs> like, I saw that and I was like, how did that not become a thing? Yeah. I, I, like, I thought he was, he, again, he's a total flippy dude, but he is crisp. He is accurate. He is very innovative. I just, he was my favorite, was Human Tornado when I was watching this. I'm surprised he didn't get bigger somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so Team Dragon Gate of uh, Yoshino and Horiguchi. Uh, D-I-F-H, which is Do It For Her. I don't know who her is. <laughs> this is Jimmy Jacobs and Tyler Black. Yeah. Who would become Seth Rollins. Yep. Uh, Scorpio Sky, who is in AEW now. Uh, the Trailer Park Boys of uh, Nate Webb and Josh Raymond with manager Johnny Webb. Um, and I believe they work X XPW as well. Uh, keeping it gangsta of Slim and Ruckus. And Matt Classic, who is a guy in a mask who's supposed to be doing like an old school, like 70s type of gimmick. And that's Colt Cabana. I was going to ask you who it was because I meant to look it up myself and I never got a chance, but I figured you would say, and okay, that makes, yeah. <laughs> makes I love, sense. Right? I yeah. love the name. I love the name Matt classic as well. <laughs> yeah. I would love to see and that. I like, I like, and I actually kind of like the idea that given the aesthetic of what they're going for, you have a guy who's purposely like old school. And I believe from some, some of the stuff I was reading, the idea was that he was either frozen in time or, or was just out of the loop or something. And he comes back from having wrestled in the eighties and is now in wrestling society X. Amazing. Yeah. My goodness. I, I, I should find an episode with a Matt classic match. Cause I would love to watch one of those to see what he does. So all the extras have a bonus match. And the one here is a triple threat of Puma, who we mentioned is TJ Perkins, Luke Hawks, who is Ultra Boy Luke in uh, XPW and the Human Tornado? Uh, this we talked about triple threat matches in the past, like good ones, bad ones. This is a really lousy one to me. Yeah. Uh, at the very beginning, Hawks and Puma are going at it, and Tornado is just standing there watching. And it's not like, oh, I'm going to let these two guys go at it, and then I'm going to come in and pick the bones. It's I'm standing here because I'm not supposed to do anything yet. And uh, eventually Hawks and Tornado go at it. Um, uh, then Tornado and Puma do a sequence. Then Hawk and Puma fight in the floor. Tornado and Hawks are back at it. Uh, and, and we get to the point where I start asking, what happened to Puma? Right. And then even the commentators are like, "Where where's Puma? Like they're worried <laughs> about him. He just disappears. He disappears for like the last third of the match. Yeah. Uh, and then he finally reemerges. He shoves Hawks off the top rope when he was going for something. Uh, then he does another sequence with Tornado, and Tornado wins with a uh, corkscrew senton, which I believe is Two Cold Scorpio's old tumbleweed move or okay. something close to that. So Tornado wins. And like I said, I loved uh, Tornado at, at the time. Right. Yeah. No, I agree with you on the match for sure. Um, it, it was not 
booked slash produced by somebody that is super familiar with triple threat matches. It, it yeah. couldn't it couldn't have been because there was no like structure to it that made any sense. Um, this again, this was just guys going out there doing some moves that they knew how to do, um, and you know. It, so I'll kind of drift into my thoughts overall here. Yeah. Real quick, I would say I think it would have been better if it was Tornado Hawks or Tornado Puma. And in fact, the second episode is a singles match between Tornado and Hawks, which they mention that because of what happened, Hawks made a special challenge to Tornado. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, that's the thing. Like, I feel like in, you got to have somebody there that knows how to do a triple threat match. Um, mm-hmm is familiar with it or or at the very least can do it well um and i feel like both the major companies right now have have that like they at least have somebody there that knows how to do it but um but yeah so uh you know watching this i some of the notes that i i put down i I already mentioned that it's i think it's this is marketed uh, you know trying to market it to non-wrestling fans and yeah, yeah, to an MTV audience, especially considering at the time they were drifting away from being music television and doing sort of fringe reality stuff. I think Jersey Shore was a thing by this point. I know that, that Real World was. Um, Sixteen and Pregnant might be around this point. Jackass was around by this point. So that's what they were trying to do. You know, this isn't so much a wrestling show, but a reality show about wrestling, which I think is what MTV probably wanted. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, I realized, like, I, I'm glad you mentioned the background <clears throat> of the guys that, that helped create mm-hmm. this, you know, because what I'm about to say might come off as, like, a little bit harsh, but, like, I, I feel like the guys who made this either didn't have or forgot to, like, include, like, a respect for wrestling, because this plays to me like the people have no respect for wrestling. It's like, how can we change it? to be accessible to people that don't like wrestling. And every now and then, like you see this happen where people try to change wrestling so that it appeals to more people. It, stop. Like it's not, you're not going to do that. Wrestling will be appealing to more audiences. When a star comes around that appeals to them, like that's kind of how it works. And you're, you're not going to make, oh, if we make it shorter and just action packed, then people are going to watch it. They're not. You know, wrestling has always been kind of in its own world. And, uh, you know, this, to me, like, it it had no psychology. It had no, very little in terms of character, very little in terms of storytelling. And so what are you left with? Like, you're left with spot fests and, you know, that kind of thing. And that's exciting, but, like, you need that other stuff, at least – in certain doses now you know obviously you know you look at wwe and AEW, like they're the balance of character storytelling and you know what happens in the ring is different between both companies right um but they still have all of those ingredients to a certain extent um and this kind of didn't um you know it it was just like you were talking about earlier with all that stuff happening in the rumble at the same time. Like, like we came back from a commercial break and they're like, this happened, this happened, this happened. And now into the ring. Like, and I was like, (laughs) well, it's like only only 10 guys. And yeah, Yeah. during and and only 45 second intervals. So during a commercial break, one whole guy came in and got eliminated and another guy came in and started his his series so it was right. yeah insane and you know i mentioned too about the prana tank and the exploding ring uh the following week so that was vampiro versus six pack for the title belt vampiro would win by uh giving waltman a tombstone pile driver through an exploding coffin right <laughs> And then another thing they did, Ricky Banderas, who would go on to be Mil Muertes in Lucha Underground, he threw a fireball at Vampiro. And apparently the MTV people didn't like the fireball. So what they did, and you can find the... No, find I the can't of this do that table. at home, Leonard. Throw a fireball. Yeah, fireball. yeah, you can totally throw fireballs at people. But they kind of like warped it in post-production. So it looks like the fireball is altering space and time around... 
uh, Vampiro. Like it's just in in the Colaholic video it looks, that he the guy said it looks like someone had used the smudge filter, right. um, you know, to to do it. But it was that they had another angle where a guy's head got dipped in uh, quick drying cement. And then um, he had a dead fish laid on him by the supposed mafia gang type of thing. Um, So just crazy, crazy stuff. On one hand, I get what they were trying to do. And from my research, I kind of understand where MTV maybe came in and not knowing anything about wrestling kind of altered what Kleinrock wanted to do. Now, I'm not saying that XPW was a great example of a professional wrestling federation. From what I know and have seen, it was not. But from everything I read up on, it does seem like Kleinrock had a very specific idea that might have worked, but because of the um, network interference of what they wanted, what they thought would work, you wind up with this hodgepodge mess that we talked about where it's edited to nothing but highlights, where a lot of basic stuff is taken out, where it's like, well, you can't use a chair, but you can explode somebody because kids can't explode people at home or or, or whatever. So it was just a a mess. And uh, from from what I was finding, it pretty much got canceled because the ratings were, were low. Uh, another thing that Kleinrock said was he thought the time slot was horrible because they were going against ECW on Tuesday nights. He said he would prefer Raw to go put us on Monday, you know, because we're different. Right. Um, but but uh, you know that was one thing that probably shot him out of the gate was 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 the time slot. What is the most lasting thing to me and the most intriguing thing to me is how many names came out of this guys like Scorpio sky and Seth Rollins who right. got their start. This was their first national exposure for right. a lot of those, a lot of those guys. Yep. So at, at, at one hand, it, it shows that whoever was picking the talent, whether that was Klein rock or Vampiro, who have you uh, had a good eye because yeah. a lot of the young people they brought in did go somewhere after this. Yeah. I, um, I actually saw uh, Seth Rollins under the Tyler black moniker uh, in ROH years and years ago before yeah. we ever knew what he would become. Um, so when I saw that name, I was certainly familiar with, with that, but, um, yeah, you know, I, I think that like, it was interesting to have the musicians on there now, having only watched the first episode, you know, I only saw like, and they invited Zach Wilde to be a part of the commentary team. Now, thankfully, you know, in real life, Zach Wilde is actually a, a very funny and, you know, interesting guy. So like, he wasn't too bad. But I can only imagine having some of those other guy, other artists on there that have no idea or don't care about wrestling at all. Like how they, yeah, I, commentary. they should. I I had seen saw a couple of clips from some of the other guys, and it's it's pretty much like they ask him, oh, so you know, you watch wrestling, you like wrestling, and they're like, yeah, <laughs> right. Um, yeah. You know, one other note, I will say one um, sign of praise that i will show this is uh okay. is the camera work um now i i thought some of the camera work was very innovative i actually thought about the xfl in a weird way because in the xfl um 30 for 30 documentary they talked about how the camera work used in the xfl in its first season was then used by the nfl um because it was innovative for sports at the time and there were certain shots on this episode certain overhead swooping shots, that kind of thing that I actually thought looked really cool. And I thought to myself, you know, if, you know, other companies use, tried to use this from time to time, I think it could work and make certain matches look really different. Um, And, you know, maybe WWE does to a certain extent, they like have some of the overhead cameras and stuff like that. But uh, that's one of the things I wrote down was that I thought the camera work was uh, pretty interesting at times. Yeah. And that probably comes from the fact that, uh, like I said, Big Vision Entertainment produced this, and you know they're not technically a wrestling company; they're a video production company. Right. So maybe it was having video production people who and, and the MTV people involved who aren't wrestling people 
again, a fresh set of eyes can give you something different and fresh. Right. As you said, that might be the only positive. Um, because even though it was quick cut and slam bam, it, it was, I think, done well for what it was visually. Right. Yeah, I would love <laughs> – I don't know if the other episodes – I would hope they, like, try to explain, like, why, you know, so-and-so isn't dead after hitting the exploding – barbed wire boxes or whatever on the outside of the yeah room. yeah you know i you know you go back back in the day like someone like jim Cornette would take a ddt from like a guy and then be in a neck brace for a month yeah yeah you know to sell it <laughs> right that's the selling we didn't even talk about that and yeah yeah, yeah uh, no selling I, I don't think anybody sold a damn thing on this show yeah not even the explosions but yeah this was fun though to watch i'm, I'm glad that i watched it because this was an era and a show that, like, again, I did not realize even existed. And the ratings, I think I looked, it was, like, below 0. 0.5, um, you know, some of the ratings. Like, they were not they were not good, but even not good for that time. Like, if that yeah, was yeah, now, they were... it, might, it might be a little bit different. But, um, yeah, for then, it was not, not very good. But, um, anyway, let us know what you thought of Wrestling Society X. If you've seen this episode or any of the episodes, um, I'm sure the people that remember the show have have thoughts right um so let us know in the comments uh what you thought and uh check out our other videos random match review segment surgery what's that card stupid questions uh we're also available wherever you listen to podcasts so please uh hit the like button in our videos subscribe to our content uh give us great reviews if you think we've earned it and uh for leonard my name is chad we will see you next time and alexa we'll see you out